Thank you. Um, I am going to talk about accessible math on the web. And the story I'm going to tell you is not like a normal uh, presentation when you give a problem and then we climbed the mountain and then we saw the golden rainbow. What I'm going to tell you is where we are right now. And I think we can do better than, than what we have done. But we, we have to wait for the technology to catch up. So uh, my name is Tim Arnold. I work at SAS Institute, and that's a company that creates analytics, statistic, business, business information, business analytics software. And thanks. Um, the way math worked before, OK, the way math worked before, and I'm talking about the old days, like last year, then you would take an equation and put it in your HTML um, by making a picture of it and putting it in an image tag with some alt text. And so that's the only way that we had to, to put math in for a while. Yeah. Yep. So what we're doing now is a little bit different, and we're putting together several different types of technology to make this work. Now, um, at SAS, we create the statistical software so the documentation has a lot of computer code, computer outputs, images, and lots and lots of math. So it was important to us to get this right. And since math is a universal language, and it's also a highly visual language, then accessibility, we've got two, two points about that. And one is that it's very important to get this right. And the second is it's pretty hard to get this right, too. So at SAS, there are two different groups of people and writers. About half of them work with an XML type editor. And underneath the covers, when they're creating their equation and a point and click interface, they're creating MathML underneath that. And I'll talk more about MathML in a second. The group I work with are some developers who all use LaTeX. And uh, how many of you here know what LaTeX is? Nice. How many of you use it? Oh, I did not expect that. OK, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better. LaTeX is a markup language that was designed and invented to create beautiful mathematical documents. It looks a little different, but, and I'm not going to tell you this whole thing is not about LaTeX. But what the point is is that we can bring in math from two different sources. It doesn't all have to be MathML. It can also be LaTeX. So for accessibility, when we're talking about visual impairment, then there are people that they say they have low vision, they have a hard time seeing, and to be able to zoom things up is good enough for them. They can read, they just uh, need things at a, a bigger font size, maybe. Um, for people with poor vision than that, then they use a screen reader. And seeing or watching or listening to somebody use a screen reader is really an education. It was for me because I was lost. The, the speaking went so fast, I, could, I had to get the guy to dial it down to about 40% so I could understand what was being said. So if you're good with the screen reader, you can scan a web page faster than you would think. So here's an accessible example. Um, you can see it's got text. Um, and then there's an equation that we can see. And this is just, I just pulled this equation out. There's nothing special about it. It's a logit equation, logit of pi equals log of pi over 1 minus pi. Um, and one of the good things about that is that it's scalable. See how sharp that is? So if that was a ping, we would have made it bigger when we zoomed in, but it wouldn't have been any easier to see. So with this and behind the scenes, this is scalable vector graphics. Whoop, wrong button. There we go. Um, it scales, and when it scales, it retains its sharpness. So we've got one set of users already. We've taken care of people with low vision because when we scale that image up, it's going to keep its uh, resolution. Now we're going to try uh, to see what a screen reader would be. And I've slowed it down for me to understand it, and I think you will too. Logic. Left parenthesis, pi, right parenthesis, equals log, left parenthesis, Start frock, pi over 1 minus pi. End frock, right parenthesis, math. 
When he says that one minus pi, I think it's like an introductory voice for one of those summer blockbusters. <laughs> one minus pi. And if you hear it on a screen reader, you, uh, if there's something that raised to a power, the voice gets higher, so it's like, raised to the power of two. Um, <laughs> and it, it helps you keep your place inside the equation. As you can imagine, that's pretty difficult to do. Um, so, that was accessible on that slide, but we're talking about real live documentation. And what we've got for the technologies to deal with that is the SVG that you saw, and then MathML and MathSpeak. And MathSpeak is what you heard over the speakers, and that's a textual representation or verbalization of that equation. It's not just what I thought sounded like that equation should be, it's a formalized language that is produced from MathML, or can be produced from MathML. Um, so it, uh, an equation can be transcribed by dictation, and it's unambiguous. So math speak is a, is a language unto itself, and it's a lot like math and math. It can be created from it. So this is an example of what math and math looks like. It lo looks like XML. It's, what it, it's part of the XML. It's an XML-type language. Um, it has its own elements, its own attributes, and that is how this equation looks with the angle brackets. You don't ever need to remember that because you hardly ever look at a real math ML equation, but that's what's underneath. There are instructions about what the math is and then something will render that. Usually a browser. Well, I said usually. It's not usually a browser. Sometimes it's a browser. If it's Firefox, Firefox can render math ML. IE, Internet Explorer, if you have a Math Player plugin and Internet Explorer is version 9 or less, it will work. Chrome, it used to work, but then they, they pulled the ability to do that out because there was a security issue. So we'd, we've got spotty abilities and support on whether browsers can render MathML. By the way, this is a math speak, and this is what it looks like if you just type it out, so it's the same thing that you heard, logit, left parenthesis, pi, right parenthesis, parenthesis et cetera. So that is the real math speak formal, uh, formal verbalization of that equation. So we're gonna put some of that together here. We're gonna take SVGs and we're gonna put that math speak inside the SVG as an attribute. So that way we've got that text version of the equation inside the image. And so a, a screen reader that recognize ARIA labels, ARIA attributes, will pick up that and know what to do with it. So by using ARIA, which is Accessible Rich Internet Applications Specification, it's a spec that you can add these attributes into your HTML and then make accessible technology work with it, kind of give it a hook so you can make things more accessible. Then. We've, we've done pretty well because now we've got SVG, we've got it zoomable so we can take care of people with low vision. For people with the right screen reader, they'll pick up the, verb, the math speak version and everybody's happy. That doesn't work for everything, but it works for a lot. So we've, we've done a, a good bit, but we need to do more because some screen readers don't work and they won't see that or they won't, I get it, they won't see the, the math speak that's embedded in that equation. And so you'll get something like, clearly, equation shows that equation QED. So um, that doesn't help very much. So even though the math, tech, math speak is in there, we need to, to have some other way for a blind person to get to it. And before I go further, this all depends on MathJax, which is a JavaScript library engine. And previously, you could you would just put that into your HTML and it would render the MathML in, in your document. So you got MathML along with your HTML, then you just add this library and poof, it looks good on every browser. So MathJax is awesome, the team behind it, they're awesome. They're so awesome that they took that idea and then extended it by making it available as a server on not inside the browser, but that you could actually use on your desktop to create these SVGs, MathSpeak, MathML versions of an equation. So that's actually what we did with our solution. So I've just thrown a whole bunch of technology at you. It's just mind-boggling how much mental 
uh, strain has gone into that collection of technology. I think we can do something with this. So the way it susses out for me is that writers are going to use MathML or they're going to use LaTeX. So you get your math in one of those forms. Then we know we can leverage and exploit what the readers already have, and that's browsers and screen readers. So what if a document producer has to do is to create that SVG, the, the image, and the math speak, and put those two things together. For most people, we've got that covered. But we also want to give them MathML, so if their screen reader for some reason doesn't see it in the image, it will pick it up in the raw app MathML. And that's what the server client solution is about. So by server client, I mean we're relying on the readers to have their client, whether it's a screen reader or a browser, or a regular browser. Um, and the server is what we're going to do as we're creating this documentation. So there's a MathJack server. The MathJax guys did all the hard work. I wired up a few things together, and this is on my GitHub account, and it's open source. GitHub.com, Tiarno, MathJax-server. And this takes a MathJax library and couples it with Node, which is a, a web server, and it sits there and listens. It, that's its only job is to listen and see what kind of math is coming. Do I have MathJax, do I, um, do I have MathML, or do I have LaTeX? And it just listens for those kind of posts. When it gets one, it returns MathML or SVG or MathSpeak. So you can integrate this MathJack server into your own documentation build where all this stuff happens automatically, and you'll get all the pieces you need to create documentation that is uh, accessible. And the way it works comes down to this slide. We have documentation with text, math, outputs, computer code, images, whatever. When we get to the math, if you follow that line down, what a, vis a sighted person will see is the SVG. A blind person will be able to hear the math speak, for the most part. If they have a screen reader that doesn't work, that doesn't see that connection, that is embedded inside an anchor, and we give them this supplemental page. If it comes down to it, we at least have a fallback to that supplemental page, which has MathML, it's got another version, of MathML rendered by MathJax, and because I've got the LaTeX source that created the equation, I show them that too, because I want to give them everything I've got. And this is about as good as we can do at this point. So here is an example. This is an example from real SAS documentation for the logistic procedure. You can see there's a good bit of math on here, and right here is the equation we've been looking at. Let me just zoom that up. Yeah, let me just get it really zoomed up there. And you can see all of the math on this page, it's the same thing, it's, it's built in the same way. There's the equation we've been looking at, uh, the logit equation. But every piece of math on that page is the same thing. It's SVG, it's got the math speak of itself embedded into it, and each one of these is a link Ooh, is that not going to work? Let me go back. Let me unzoom this, maybe. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> I clicked on the wrong equation. When I was setting up the slide, I just did it for this one equation so you could see it. There. If you click, normally if you hover over that thing, it says, it's got hover text that says alternate uh, page uh, for the equation, something like that. Anyway, here it is. I'm on a Chrome browser. You can see that Chrome does not render the MathML. I, it, I mean, something's there, but it's not correct. So this is what raw MathML looks like, but hey, you wouldn't be on this page if you could see it. You wouldn't have come from the original page to begin with. So a, math, a screen reader is probably going to pick up that raw MathML and be able to, to view it. The next part is the same MathML, but this time rendered with MathJax. And um, so they, can, they have multiple ways on this page to see if they had problems in the other case, in the original case where they only had uh, the SVG. And for right now, that is accessible math on the web. Um, at least that's the best we can do. And we have an accessibility team, and, 
and there are people who actually can't see, and they say this is the best, and they've got the, a lot of different screen readers to test with. So if there's anybody at your, your place who wants to work on this, and I can help with the workflow, um, contact me, tim.arnold at sas.com. Thank you. Thank you.